Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. And by lead pastor, we mean that I have the most say, the biggest piece mm. of the leadership pie. I am mm. the first among all the equals. Mm. I am the grand pooba, mm. pope, lord protector mm. of the just, leaders. Uh, yes. Yes. No, that's not what it means. No, nowhere near that. <laughs> we believe in parity, guys. Parity means that all the elders have equal authority. Mm-hmm. Nobody has more authority than another. Not even the staff, full paid, full time staff paid elders. They do not have more authority or say than volunteer elders. Nope, all the same. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, your pro- your ideas are probably the one that we shoot down the most. Yeah, because I have ideas. The rest of y'all just sit around there and say no to stuff. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, that. Yeah. That's Where, what's where's happening? your contribution? Oh yeah, just say no. Yeah, that's what well, you guys do. Just so you know, that's a probably a great contribution given the ideas you've had. Yeah. All I'm saying is an egg drop from a helicopter <laughs> once every seven years is like a it's like a year of Jubilee. Yeah. You know? I mean yeah. it's like a, like I think, you know, and, and just because I want to fill them with like each egg with like a fifty dollar bill, mm-hmm. you know, I want to bless the people, right? I wanna in the neighborhood. And you know, to be honest, yeah. that one was better. <laughs> Then mm. your your request the uh, of to get a segue so you could go around the church. Yes, yes, because I from your door or from yeah. your car door mm-hmm. to your office, you wanted that segue yeah, to kind of go there, go to the bathroom, go up to stay on the stage. It's as close as I can get to mounting up on wings like eagles. That's as close <laughs> as I can get as a segue. So I figure segways and uh, helicopter drops. Mm. You know, that's that's really that is my philosophy of ministry. You know, it's excess. Excess. Excelsior? Oh, Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How was your day? Uh, you know how my day was. <laughs> we already talked about it off air. Nobody cares. My days are fine. Mm. The Lord is good. It's the day the Lord mm-hmm. has made. He just made it a pain in my rear end. That's right. That's, well, uh, thankfully. It, it's his prerogative. It's, yeah, I mean, he's and, allowed. And thankfully, at your advanced age, mm-hmm. those days are short. They are. They are. There are few. There, there are few. less days yeah. like this ahead. The, the few, the, the, the not proud. No, yeah, the the few, the 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 angry. The few, the angry. <laughs> <laughs> the complaining. The complaining. Joe. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, you know, like yeah, Eli uh, has. Uh, Eli's gonna need my my oldest son is gonna need knee surgery on both knees uh, to fix his his gimpy knees. Uh, my dad. Given I'm, you're 200 and he's at what 120. He's 17. Ah. And I'm 49, mm. for the record. For the record? For the record. For the record. 149 until 149. September. I'm 50. and 49. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, you know what's weird? It, no, don't no, forget it. No, no, I, just, I just pulled a Jimmy. I just pulled a Jimmy. Yeah. I had a thought, and then I thought, and better now notice. And now notice, look, okay. <gasps> I'm intrigued. Okay, I, I just, it popped into my head. And this hasn't popped into my head in decades. That's how far right. removed this is from my current experience. Decades. Um. I used to listen to King Diamond all the time. Uh, King Diamond is uh, is a heavy metal uh, mm. artist with mm-hmm. a high falsetto voice, mm. lots of theatrics, face paint, and all that. His albums in the '80s, when I listened to him, uh, were uh, like uh, they were epics. They were stories. It was a, it was a beginning, middle, and end. Each whole album uh, told one story about a haunted house or mm. about a, a, a demon possessed woman or whatever, and. Uh, it's and like he, Queen's right. It, no. Operation Mindcrime. No, Go ahead. Not at all. Exactly the not, same. Not, not at exactly. A lucidity. <laughs> no, nothing like that. <laughs> um, and uh, and I it popped in my some of the lyrics popped into my head and uh, he references 1845, which is when the Southern Baptist Convention was formed. Mm. And I was like, oh, it's interesting. He's telling a story. That takes place in 1845. I mean, it really, the story begins in 1777 on mm, July 7th, mm. 1777, and then it smash cut to 1845. And uh, I was like, "Oh man, 1845!" And uh, it's like I was getting prepped to be SBC even when I was into the occult. That's what's weird. Yeah, that's the thought you just had. Yeah. Well, because I was I was at the gym this morning. First thing, and bright and early. And were you listening to this album? No, no, it just popped in my head. 
those those I memorized every lyric to every I mean, all that stuff back in the day. So it's still kind of rattling around in there. And I'm on the treadmill. I didn't have my headphones again. And so uh, yeah, I was just like, oh yeah, hmm. Hmm. it popped in. Not sure why. No rhyme or reason. Nobody cares. This is why like you shouldn't ask me how my day is. We've already talked about it. Because then you're gonna get stuck with like the dregs. Like what can I? What what's rattling around in there? Mm. King Diamond from like 1988. I mean. No, it's, that would have been like, that would have been like eighty five. I think. Anyways, it doesn't matter. No right, well, it's it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It I is. Bet it is very it's compelling. Interesting. It's compelling pod. It's great pod. Yeah. This is people, this is amazing. Let people tune in. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, like I'm not. Let's hear all about. Yeah, there let's, haven't been enough articles about me being like a, a satanic uh, evil doer pretending to be a reformed Baptist who uh, likes heavy metal. That's uh, we don't have enough of those articles. So like this will. I think we need one more. This will this will stimulate some. Uh, Get the creative juices flowing. At least flowing. I don't have Julie Roy's coming after me. Yet. Yet. Yes. Yet. Yet. Yeah. But I would have to do something like pretty bad. She's not going to mess with me because I, I like scary movies. I'd have to do so. I would have to like well, cover ha- up abuse or steal. I was about to say, you ha- you'd have to do something pretty yeah. legit. I don't know how else to word it. Oh, you think that those sins are legit? No, huh? stop it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. Like you'd have to actually do, you know yeah. what I mean? It's it's not. This, she's not going to go after. She's not going to report on the run of the mill. Yeah. Failures. Well, those aren't failures. Of uh, Joe Thorne. <laughs> First of all, I like to think of myself. I mean, I'm as... surprised there's not an article out there about that the beard cut you you oh, have. That's a good beard cut. Man, I'm I, surprised she hasn't canceled you. I've got like uh, I probably got eight positive remarks and uh, and two like uh eight positive yeah eight people like yeah hey, that's good I like it like that and then two uh. Which means there's a whole bunch more people going, uh, but don't want to say anything. That also means there's a lot more mm, going. Not necessarily. Yes. No, what's more likely? Are people more likely to withhold like, oh, wow, I don't like that? Or are they more likely to withhold, hey, that looks good? They're more likely to withhold, that looks terrible. I mean, your logic is sound. Yes, of course it is. I'm smarter than you. Better than you. Better looking. Stronger. Faster. Taller. You're not Taller. Listen, none of these are true. So <laughs> older, I'm gonna, you're you older. Go, I'm, okay, I'm I'm older. You're older, mm-hmm. wrinklier. I do have more weathered, wrinkles, more more moles. I have, I'm molier, more cancerous. Yes, I do have cancer. Yeah, I do that, need to get that. Fixed. That's that's more than me. I haven't got that fixed that, yet. I need to go, dude. Need to of go course go. you didn't get it fixed. Of course you didn't get it fixed. I, I tried, and, and like they weren't in my network. And then, <laughs> then it's gonna spread. Okay, well, you know, what are you gonna do? Wow, and I, then here you are I tried. enjoying your cigar. Yeah, well, this is this is a this is a different kind though. That that that's cancer free. No, it's just a different brand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joey! And today we're recording on a Thursday. No, a Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, uh, which means it's not a Monday. So this couldn't have been the worst day of the week for you. No. Yeah. Nice. No. 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 Monday's always the worst. And uh, yeah. Today okay. was I. Right. It was all right. It was good. You know, I just uh, yeah, it was good. Could be worse. Um, you could be working for a parachurch organization. Yeah. <laughs> go. I could go back to that. Those yeah, days. Right. You did. <laughs> yeah, I could go back to those days. Young life. Yep. Young life of Canada. Mm-hmm. Well, we got an email. For the record, I enjoyed my time. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he thinks of it as doing time though, so that tells you. Something I enjoyed well. my time. Yeah, was, my time. My time in the was slammer. easy. Yeah, my okay. time. Yeah, I I got three squares. Hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, had you got he, recess. He, he got bottom bunk. Uh, yeah. No, I definitely had the bottom. Yeah. So we got an email uh, from a listener, mm-hmm. and uh, the subject is parachurch ministry and frustrations, and the message starts off with, "Hey guys." It's usually, by the way, just for the record. Oh, here guys, we go. Guys is usually here. what's it say? Hey, guys. Well, no, maybe that's, that's why. They're like, I'm going to change it up. Okay. Well, this is probably why you're not popular at your parachurch job. What is wrong with you, okay, Joe? Okay, I'm trying to keep it real with this guy. All right. First of all, I want to thank you guys for the work you put into the podcast. It has been super beneficial to me in my walk with Christ. All right. Now to the tough stuff. I have the opportunity to teach Bible to middle school students through a release time program. Imagine an after school FCA meeting or a Bible study, but during the school day. It has What's tru- FCA? Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Got it. Go. It has truly been a blessing to disciple these students and teach about Jesus, sometimes for the first time. However, I am the youngest person, I'm 23, 
here at this ministry by at least 30 years. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a gap. Mm -hmm. uh, the director of the program is 64. So you can imagine the age difference has led to some disagreements, not outright conflict, but frustration on my end because of the view philosophy of ministry. The director is very focused on the number of students, how many students are coming every week, having students invite other friends, having evangelistic sessions by showing Billy Graham videos, and having students check a box and say a prayer. I think you get the point. And the, de and the decrease of students due to COVID and just waning Christian influence in culture is an issue. Um, I have been a point of frustration. It has been a point of frustration for me because I much rather have a few students that come once a week than tons of students who are just here for number's sake. All right. So we kind of get his situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here are the questions I have for you guys. Number one, what do you guys think is the role of a parachurch ministry and how can I help to support local churches while I'm here. Number two, how can there's a I'm, I'm the, if I'm not I'm not stumbling. Okay, he's missing words. Yeah, Joey, uh, is, put your glasses on. Okay, my glasses are on. All right, good. But now you, do you see should. how the ear parts are like on the top of my head. Yep, they're not actually behind my. Ears. Yeah, so I, I, it has more to do with you. How can I help as a young dude who wants to serve the Lord faithfully without coming across as a young seminary student who wants to change the world? Uh, I want to help to pivot the ministry in a way that's focused on discipleship, discipling middle school students, and making Christ known at a parachurch ministry. And number three, how can I be humble and teachable while also trying to provide helpful critiques to the ministry for its betterment? Really good questions. Uh, you sound like a good dude. You know, mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. a good opportunity. You're taking it and you're experiencing what are what I I think we would both say these are normal frustrations that anybody's going to have coming into a new ministry where yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, especially if you're like, there, there are certain cultural differences, like in this case, generational. Um, and you're asking some good questions. So Jimmy, what about number one? What do you guys think is the role? Yeah, I'm not going to do number one yet. Oh, why not? I'm going to jump to number three. Oh, here we go. All Jimmy, right, we're, we're, well, number three. We're going to go to number three. How can I be humble and teachable while also trying to provide helpful critiques to the ministry for its betterment? So uh, you mentioned here, about your age and the 30 year difference, right? Like with others in there. Yep. So when I read that, I think to myself, what this is an assumption. Ever, what a wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm kind of going with an assumption here mm. is never a good idea, but go ahead. But I think this one's fair. A lot of those guys, a lot of these individuals have been there for quite some time. Yep. That's, that's, that's a fair guess. I think that's a, I think that's a fair guess. And I, I want us to be careful in not, and I don't think you are, but not diminishing that. Right. Uh, yes, there's generational differences. Yes, things change over time. But there's a lot of faithfulness in mm -hmm. this ministry by those individuals for a number of years that have seen changes throughout already. Yeah. Um, I I would really, I think the, the, the humbleness, I would... I'd love that. I would love that opportunity to be able to be mentored and trained by seasoned saints that have not just are committed, but have shown their commitment through an extended period of time in this ministry. Mm. That means one, they love the ministry. They believe in the ministry. Uh, they value the ministry. And two, they value the gospel being proclaimed to these middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Like go into that. And, uh, go into that with that mindset of here are some people that have gone before they've gone through this. They've been in my position. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I just, there's something there that I think is beautiful that I'd want yeah. to embrace and make sure that is called out. So you're saying, uh, it sounds to me like you're saying, if you want to know how to be humble and teachable, then go in with the posture of, of a listener and a learner. Yeah. Like you go in, like when we, you know, we used to go to the coffee shop, no, 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 cigar shop. That's where we used to go. Um, and before Jimmy and I went, I mean, I, I, I was going for years as well mm -hmm. by myself. And I loved going to cigar shops. I still do. And if I was around older guys, which is usually the case, um, I just ask them questions because it's interesting and fun. And I oftentimes wind up learning a lot because these guys have been walking the planet for a long time and have had all kinds of cool experiences. Mm -hmm. How much more... When we're talking about guys in ministry. Correct. So like, yeah, oh, listen, l l let's just admit it on the front end. We all have, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have the, the problem of ignorance coming in because you don't know because you haven't had enough experience mm -hmm. and they can have the, uh, the problem of, well, we've always done it this way. Correct. We're all going to have our issues. Yep. But still, I, I totally agree with you, Jimmy, uh, to go in hungry, to go in and go, I'm going to, I'm going to 
steal every good idea they have. I'm going to listen to every That's good it. anecdote and story that they have. I want to listen to the to the, to the to the accounts of God's faithfulness in over these past decades. Mm-hmm. You go in like that with with a hunger and a and a readiness to take everything in and listen. You're a seminary student. You should be smart enough to go like, okay, good. I, th- this stuff doesn't really fit my worldview, so I'm not going to use that as much. But man, I, I like that. I think that's really good. Go yeah, in be, hungry. Go in hungry. Um, and I mean, that doesn't mean to not give your input. I think right. that's really important because, uh, you know, it, even Paul's, you know, telling Timothy, right? Like, don't let anyone look down on you because of your youth. Right. Right. Instead, God, set the example. Set the example. Mm-hmm. Right. Set the example. Um, and now I'm going to use kind of a worldly illustration here in business, uh, just in any, and, well, business specifically, because that's one of my contacts and I've seen it in ministry and I've been the person in ministry that, you know, young blood comes in full of ideas thinking these other guys don't, don't know. Right. They don't know. And I've seen businesses like really struggle when they take it wholehearted, where they let someone come in and make all these changes and, and. It, it really kind of messes up what has been going on. Yeah, it, I would say it's a mistake to let a, a young guy, and let's not even say young, to let an inexperienced guy just start That's making it. all the changes he wants. Like, oh, yeah. he might have some great ideas that you want to implement, but you got to coach this guy. You got to walk with this guy, support his good ideas, his creativity. Now, I think, you know, when we're talking about this, like, how can I... Um provide helpful critiques uh, honestly sometimes it's just the way that you put it yeah instead of saying w- the way you guys are doing it isn't working focus on what you see to be happening in the people you're trying to reach mm-hmm. you can say like you know i've noticed you know it, 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 it the generation that i'm a part of for example and just beneath me i'm pretty close to them and here's what i'm noticing in them mm-hmm. they respond to x y and z yeah they can do the math about oh we're not doing that mm-hmm. we're doing a b and c yeah because that's what used to really work so maybe maybe it's just the, the way you can talk about it and just you know leverage what you're certain of uh leverage your observations and then see where they go with that and hopefully if if, if they are mature they should go well what are you thinking uh, like what, what, what are your ideas yeah. in this? Yeah. Or it's even something as simple as, Hey, you know, here's the, the plan, you know, you're working through, here's the plan that we've been going, we, we've been doing this whole time, right? Here's the plan. Now, this is kind of the response that I'm, I'm seeing. We're getting this response. We're getting this days, response. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's good. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Like engage them to be part of that solution. Mm-hmm. Like, how do we reconcile that? Cause we want to get them to this place. But we don't seem to be getting them to that place. So maybe do we tweak something? Am I doing something incorrectly? How do we like? Wh- and good wh- leaders respond to that. You know, it's like we, I, I've mentioned it before that uh, there were there were there was a small group of Southern Baptists attempting to plant a church in a college town on the college campus, and they were doing this for almost twenty years. Mm. They had made many attempts, like well over twelve, mm. under twenty, many attempts, and they always did it the same exact way. And uh, there was never a good response from yeah. the student body. And they never, and when they finally did ask for input, and I gave input, and Steve McCoy actually was there to give input, mm. they were like, no, no, I don't like it. And so they did it the same way again. And mm-hmm. a year later, there was nothing. Yeah. After all the money, hiring somebody, yep. doing the same thing. But yep. good leaders, when they hear the problem, when they, when, they, when they get the information, they go, okay, we've got to do something with this. Yeah. So is it, is it the approach or is it the execution of the approach? Right? Yes. It, it, listen, they could have the right approach and you might not be good at it. You know, I don't think that's what it is. I'm just yeah. saying like there's a, there's always, well, a, we got to look at all the scenarios absolutely. here, right? There's a yeah, lot of variables yeah. at play that need to be discussed. Yeah. So I think that's good, right? Recognize mm-hmm. your weaknesses. They'll recognize their weaknesses. You'll recognize each other's hopefully, and then be able to help each other. Mm-hmm. Keep it, um, you know, I, I conversational is, is a word that's coming to mind, but keep it um, not competitive, but collaborative, right? Yeah, like yeah. You're not trying to beat them or one up them. You're, you're trying to collaborate together mm-hmm, to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, and I think, listen, it sounds to me like you are teachable. 
I mean, it sounds like that. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't sound like a, an arrogant kid. So I'm sorry. You don't seem like an arrogant young person. Wow. Okay, 23. Wow. I'm old enough to be his dad. Wow. So it's just like, you know, it's hard. I don't mean that disrespectfully. Goodness. And you meant grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> I meant dad. <laughs> Technically. Right. I, I don't think I could. Mm. All right. Jumping up to, to number one. All right. What do you guys think is the role of a parachurch ministry? So I was involved in a parachurch ministry for 10 years. Loved it. Absolutely loved my time uh, with Young Life. Anything uh, to steal the spotlight from the Church of Jesus Christ. And that's the mentality you will come <laughs> up against. <laughs> that right there. As much as we are God's children, the people of God, as much as we claim it's about the kingdom, I'm sorry. It very much becomes a territorial uh, fight. Mm -hmm. As much as it, it, it might not even be on your end and the parachurch end, right? Uh, yeah, it goes. This it, problem is on goes, the church end and the parachurch end. Correct. Absolutely. It goes both ways in that. Um, so for me, I do not see a parachurch like Young Life or like that organization. I I don't view it as the church. I, I, I it's yeah. very separate, and I, that's the sure. mentality and coming in as as a parachurch organization. We must always remember we are not the church. We are not. You're not a church. We're not a church, and we're not. We're not trying to like uh, engage students in this case that they would be lifetime worshipers here, right? Right in in this. So you. It, so with the role of the parachurch, I think I think especially like I'm going to go into young life and even what you're talking about here, it's much more evangelistic. It's much more outreach oriented. That's the focus of it, and. A good parachurch organization that is functioning well, that understands its place, would then try to funnel those individuals into an actual local church. Right. And that's what, I mean, I, I strive to do in my time, was I would include the churches in the organization, uh, in the events. I had leaders that were from various local churches, and as they built relationships with teens— and they presented the gospel and kids and, and teens began responding to it. They would disciple them, but then also go with them to their local church, whether it was on Sunday or youth ministry. And for me, I loved it when a teen stopped attending my thing and was committed to the local church. Yeah. Was there Sunday mornings? Was there at the, the evening? Like got involved in the life of that church. So for me, I look at a parachurch and I think it's it's meant to be alongside the church to be helping individuals find their place within the local church. Yeah, that's good because I mean that's what parachurch means, right? It's a it's a Christian organization that works outside of but alongside mm -hmm. local churches, ideally. And and there are amazing, important parachurch organizations, yeah. whether it's Young Life or Legionnaire. That's a parachurch That's organization. That's a parachurch guys. organization, yeah. <laughs> you can be connected to and tied to a church, which yep. is great. That's a, that is a really good thing. Yep. I think it's when a parachurch organization has uh, a tie in to a local church, that's wonderful. But um, they work outside of but alongside local churches, and they exist because the local church or local churches aren't doing enough. Now, mm. maybe, maybe that's because. They are deficient, or maybe it's because there is just so much to be done that um, Christians a big need. Yeah, there's such a great need that Christians are. Hey, let's organize this and do this. We're not going to start a church, but we want to do this and then funnel people back into local churches. That should be ideal. However, I I have seen I've, and I've talked to people that work for some college campus ministries, uh, and some of them are clear. We are trying to get these students plugged into local churches while others are like, nope, mm -hmm. that is not the goal. We have a Sunday gathering. We want them to be here on Sunday. And so the idea really is, it, that's the idea. The, the implication is that they are actually removing people or keeping people from the local church in that sense. And that's, and, and that's detrimental. Else. Yeah. Because like when a kid ages out, when an mm -hmm. individual ages out, what do they have left? Because you're not, here's the thing. You're not going to find any church that's going to function like the parachurch organization. Correct. There will there'll be some overlap, of course. I mean, no, no church is going to have songs and prizes and skits and <laughs> special songs. and so, or, so. But here's the thing. Or everybody prizes. your age. Yeah. Right? Like you go to a church, it's every generation, ideally. Yep, yep. But, in, but in a college ministry, 
everybody's in college. Mm-hmm. It's 18 to what, 22 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's that's a, a problem that a good parachurch recognizes. They, a, a good parachurch, parachurch organization understands what its unique purpose is, how it helps the kingdom and helps local churches, and it knows what it is and isn't. Um, and it and it doesn't feel like it's the answer. Well, you know, some churches are upset, like we don't need crew or young life or whatever. Well, like yeah, but you're not reaching those people, mm-hmm. and they are. Mm-hmm. So why are you mad? Yeah, like like praise God that they're reaching people. Okay, and maybe you know what? Maybe you could go ahead and talk to them. And go, hey, is there a way that we could partner? Come with alongside. You? Maybe maybe we can send some of our people over there to yep. to, to help out, not to take it over, but yep. to actually you know help out and be a part of it. So I, I think. I think we we agree that the role of a parachurch ministry is the preaching of the gospel, um, and you know the, the to, they're a part of the discipleship process, especially as they're trying to get them to connect to a local church. Um, how can I help to support local churches while I'm here? Well, Jimmy, I mean, what's I mean, he's in a similar situation to what mm-hmm. you are. What what are the what are the easy things that he should be doing or well, simple things. simple things? I think is connecting with the leadership of those local churches, mm-hmm. right? Uh, connect with the leadership. Let them know what's going on. Let them know, hey, you know, here's how you guys can be praying. Yeah, that's good. You know, uh, finding out, hey, what are what are those things that you guys are offering as far as, you know, middle school ministry? Yeah. Uh, what are your Sunday school, like what, uh, what are your Sunday service times? Yep. Like, we want to be able to encourage our youth to be part of this. Do you have any kids in this age range so that if I send one of these students or some mm-hmm. of these students over there, You'll know, like these are the kids that are going to be like contact points for yep, them. Like, yep. Because adults should be greeting them and everything as well. But it'll help. It'll help. Like, oh wow, like these these kids are like coming over and they're like, let me sit with them. And this yeah. is, like, you don't feel so so much like an outsider. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, if you build a relationship and you build the trust, they might even allow you. I mean, I had a great opp- I had great opportunities uh, in Port Alberni where I was invited to share at the local gathering. A testimony of here's what's going on. That's cool. I want to thank you for your prayers. So I want to thank you for your financial support. Yeah. And I want I want you to hear the blessing of what that is in this community. And here's 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 I I, I give us you know what what's been going on. This kid or that kid, and I'll I'll share a testimony. Tongues, mm. signs and wonders, mm. leg lengthening. Nah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I think that's on, in your past. Uh, yeah, I think it's in there. No, nah, no, nah, gold dust. Okay, oh, gold, gold dust. dust. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, being able to share that because that's a that's a that's an encouragement and support to the local church. Look what's happening in the community. Yeah, the gospel is being yeah. proclaimed. Yeah. I mean, listen, most people that I know, even if they haven't thought much about it, are really grateful for at least one parachurch ministry. Yeah. Like modern reformation. <laughs> league in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, or maybe you like our daily bread, you know, or whatever it is like there, there are young life crew. There's usually something where even people are like, Oh, parachurch organizations, man, they're just, they're just, they're a parasite. That's like sucking the life out of local churches. Like, okay, no, some are, and some churches are synagogues with Satan and should be destroyed. Mm. Right? That doesn't I mean, all churches are bad or all parachute organizations. Yes. Are bad. Yes. So, and then if you go like, yeah, but do you like Legionnaire? It's always funny because some of the people that really don't like parachute organizations, like what about Legionnaire? You like them? Okay. Mm, love them. Okay. Love them. Yeah. I love Legionnaire. Yeah. They're doing yeah. great work and they know exactly yeah, Walk in the are. word. Yeah. Walk in the, that's a moody thing, right? Mm. At least, at least it was associated with moody. I think it's a moody thing. Is that a moody thing? I don't know. I always thought it was, but just because it was always there when I was there. Oh. So, but it doesn't mean that it was. And a lot of the professors wrote for it, I think. Gotcha. Okay. So, okay. Well, nah. um, all right. And so we've already talked a little bit about this, but how can I help as a young dude who wants to serve the Lord faithfully without coming across like a young seminary student? And we know what you're talking about. Yep. Because I was a seminary student. Uh, and although I was pretty chill as a seminary student, I was super amped and ugly as a Bible college student. Mm. Um, but yeah, we all like, you know, Jimmy, you know, you, you, you were at Judson, same thing. It's easy to slip into a, I've got this figured out. Yeah. I'm in the original languages. I'm taking classes with these professors on church history and see, become mine, an expert. See, mine was different though. Oh yeah. Because oh, I, because you went to Judson and like, like junior college. But yeah, go ahead. So I went after years of experience yeah yeah that does help. and so it was, it was really it was really funny going in and then hearing things and being the one to say like yeah, wait wait till you get out of the field yeah well you were the old head i was the old guy in your, in I your was the class old guy. yeah you know i was like they're like hey you want to go like we're gonna go to the library we're gonna grab some pizza and then like study 
you want to go study? Probably like nine, nine thirty. I'm like, no, I'm going to go home for dinner, put my kids to bed. <laughs> and then I got to read to them. And then, uh, then I'm going to do my, uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and go in, in my office and, and do some homework. Thanks guys. <laughs> when I was at Moody, um, we were on floor 15, Culbertson 15, Culbertson Hall, floor 15, Colby 15, which became known on campus as the amillennial floor and the reformed floor. I don't know why. Anyway, um, so it was all a bunch of young dudes. You know, I was a couple years older than most of the people in my particular grade um, or year, but uh, there was an older guy. He was in his 40s. Yeah. Harold. Yeah. Harold was cranky. Mm. <laughs> he was cranky. And I don't blame him because he's living in a dorm with a bunch of 20 oh. year olds. Who yeah. are just like wrestling naked in the lounge. Like it's just like, you know. <laughs> I really think we should like rethink the seminary model. <laughs> well, that was Bible college. Oh, that was a Bible college. Yeah. They don't, they're not dorms, I don't think, typically in seminaries, like apartments and stuff. I I don't know. I still I'm just I still think we should re rethink the seminary model. What, what what do you want to change about it? Uh I would not allow without five years experience. Ah. Uh, I would say after Bible school. Go find a pastorate, make it online, do intensives. Mm. Five years later, yeah. you're eligible. Yeah, maybe. I think that experience is. Yeah, but like, how can you get experience when you haven't been like even trained? Most churches can't train people in a lot of the they things. Should. That, yeah, you should yeah, but they should. Yeah, you should be rethinking. But they, but can't. they can't. But you, yeah. you know, but they should. So it was like in an ideal world, we wouldn't need seminaries. Churches yeah. would do this. Yeah. But, yeah. but you're get, still get imagining back. a world where we have seminaries. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm imagining a world that we go back to our roots and get that on on the job training for it yeah but that's never yeah i mean yeah it was people yeah pastors and stuff they would go have some school but even that but they would be trained as an associate for x number of years and they would be sent off to plant okay well yeah that's uh, planting is a is, is a relatively right, new phenomenon right, that, right, maybe not plant but you know what i mean but yeah they'd I, go I, off to, I, to pastor it on their own yeah i I'm, I'm trying to think like the average age of seminary students was uh, older, uh, say, 40 years ago. Now, why do you think it was older? Like, help me understand yeah, that, that. that. Yeah, so, uh, and, I'm, and, I'm not, and I'm not exactly sure. Um, and it wasn't that, that all of them, but like the average age was higher yeah. than it is now. People are going straight from college into seminary. I think there's, I think it depends on the individual. I don't know, like, if uh, guys coming out of a university and they've they've maybe been taught something uh i don't know how feasible it is that they could be a, a pastor unless they had super robust training at the local church and so if we're if we're imagining that world then i would just imagine a world where seminary is not needed i don't i don't think in general it's it's ideal for people to put off seminary spend five years in the pastorate and then go and then go to seminary because online what about online? Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Now with technology and stuff, I think it's much more better to rethink it and do like a Midwestern model. Mid MBTS, right? Yeah, Midwestern yeah. Baptist Theological yeah, Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I think about it. I, mean, I think that experience is... is Again, you can, but to get the experience, worthwhile. like you have to be ready to have the experience. So I'm just not sure. Like it, many seminaries require ongoing, you know, investment in the local church. You've got to do uh, internships while you're getting your degrees. So there's 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 a lot of that, and I'm just I'm I'm trying to wrap my brain around if it's a good idea for people to postpone seminary as a principle. And I don't think it is. I think for some well, I know people you're institutionalized. Good. Yeah. So. <laughs> you, of course you're, you're ingrained in the system. Having, you know, no, no, seen I, the benefit. I'm, try, I'm trying, I'm trying to think about but like, it. Think, think of like how much seminary, how much more, maybe I'm wrong, how much more you would have gotten out of it. Having the experience. And maybe it wasn't even like associate or associate or lead pastor. Nothing like that. Right. Uh, See, I don't think there's or more to get. Out. For I, don't, sure. I don't think there's more to get out of it by going in later, because they're not even generally covering the deep ministry practical stuff. It's systematic theology. It's Old Testament, New Testament. It's Greek. It's Hebrew. It's it's largely academic. So it becomes very much. I mean, there's a there's a sprinkling of practical things in here, in there. But by and large, I mean, what every seminary grad says is, "We well, don't teach you that in seminary." 
anytime it's a practical crisis yeah, issue. Yeah, so, you know. So, but that's now, a diff- yeah, but now it's a different issue. We're yeah. imagining a whole new world. Now, yeah, and now you got Lagos. So, and so how, what, many, how many people are now still out of seminary, right? Out of, you know, seminary going to their Greek and Hebrew? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, I wouldn't know. But I mean, again, even then, most most people that go to seminary, they'll they'll take like what, maybe a year or two of of if they're getting an MDiv of Greek, which allows them to you know they learn how to translate, but they're not Greek scholars, and so they're yeah. they're, they're 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 still going to use the tools, but they're now they're really equipped to use the tools. So that's what I'm saying. Like I don't know that people would necessarily get more out of it, but like I was of the mindset I would I, I listened to my pastor, and so if my pastor were to say, hey. I don't want you to go to seminary right now. I want you to go on staff somewhere, um, which by the way, most churches won't hire you without a seminary degree. So that's where it's again, like the whole, it's a whole yeah. different world. The whole, yeah. The yeah. whole evangelical and evangelical, whatever, whatever you want to call it monster. Yeah. I don't know. I think most churches just want people who like have, have had time to study. They've been, you know, it's like, Paul went away for a while mm-hmm. and was taught and trained before he went out. You know, it's, it's sort of that model. Most guys aren't going to Bible college and then seminary, right? But Paul had it on the front end, though. He had a lot of training. He went away. I mean, yeah, I guess there was a bit of reorientation for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, years. So you know? it's like, yeah, so I don't know. But I, don't know. I think for some people, it's, it's, it's probably good. And definitely, I agree that people need to have um, a lot of church experience. You, I mean, you, you definitely need to have it. I just don't know that that's necessarily a... A better approach, and I think if like your your track is to go, you know, strictly academic, then I think it's fine, right? Like a lot of those, uh, you know, not a lot of people, but you know, some people have they're going to go the academic track, you know. But it, f- either way, seminary is academic. No, I understand. I understand. So I can see the benefit of going strict, you know, strictly to or not uh, directly Straight. to that uh, after. Because after that, you're probably most likely going on to your doctorate of some level, right? Um, yeah, but even then, like that's such a, such a small opportunity for like you know teaching in an academic environment. We're talking, oh yeah, especially we're, now we're talking pastors, and it's why I'm still like I don't know, I I just don't buy that it's necessarily a better a better option. If we're gonna reimagine the whole thing, like I'm all for that. Then it's like okay. Oh no, uh, I want to reimagine okay. the whole thing. Okay, but yeah, but that's not what you said. You were like, oh, we'll just put seminary later. Yeah, I said, that's step one. That's okay. That's well, I, step- I, I think I, I I don't think that's step one. I think you and I are just gonna have to disagree on this. No, disagree to agree. We disagree to agree. I like that. Yeah. Can see? that be your thing? That'd be our thing. We disagree, disagree to, agree. to agree. Yeah. T shirt. That that's we're gonna good. we're gonna get that that's on. That's pretty good. All right. Disagree to agree. Yeah. Uh, I love it. So in the end, man, um, you are a young guy. You got a lot to learn, but you also have a lot to offer. And that, I mean, hopefully they recognize that you have a lot to offer, and hopefully you recognize that you have a lot to learn. Mm. Be hungry, like Jimmy said. Uh, be teachable. Uh, mine those older saints for their wisdom, but then offer up humbly your thoughts and your observations and your insights. And uh, yeah. Plug people into local churches. I mean, let, let that let that be a mark. If you want to, you said something about um, you, you want to change the trajectory or something like that. Pivot the ministry in a way that's focused on discipleship. Um, well, listen, uh, ministries develop over time; they get stronger or weaker. Uh, this can get stronger, and you guys can learn how to do things better. But one of the main things is going to be making sure that you're finding ways to plug them into local churches. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You could follow us online on Instagram, Twitter at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, drfoshin.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, joefostore.com, and grab some gear. Get that hoodie. We got that fresh pod every Monday and Thursday, blog posts and video content over at the website. We got ladies tees. And we've also got that all access exclusive content. We do. Banter of Truth on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Weekday Wisdom, Monday through Friday. Yep. Head on over to drfoshin.com slash all access to register today. Later. Mm-hmm.